Now, Tony, I'm going to do a quick introduction of the Shelf Help Club because it's such an amazing scheme and it's it's so brilliant that you've started this up. So I um, really appreciate you joining me. Um, uh, so, yes, the Shelf Help Club is the world's first self-help book club, which is awesome. And they are dedicated to celebrating, inspiring and supporting personal development. Now, it's founded by our very own Tony here uh in 2017 and um so tony uh, is it true that you were a journalist before as well so yeah i, I suppose i am still i call myself a recovering journalist because <laughs> i don't yeah i don't um i do write for other people still now but everything i write about is all self-help or personal development so previously i worked for about 10 years at the sun newspaper and then oh, after wow. that i worked at the mail online so um yeah two pretty big um publications i suppose but um, yeah, yeah. So it's very different what I do now. But I suppose it's all what I realise is it was all been good training. You know, as a journalist <laughs> yourself, it's 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 all tra it's all content, isn't it? And it's all storytelling, and it's all. I think I'm really about sharing information, and um, I think my background is working for some mass mass market publications like the Sun and the Mail has really helped what I want to do now, which is just make self-help and personal development as accessible as possible and simple and fun and kind of like, like you just said, like supporting and inspiring and, and celebrating really, rather than it's just something we have to do when we, you know, when we feel broken, it should be something we do anyway, like going to the gym or going for a walk or what we'll talk about tonight, like, you know, kind of making sure our connections are strong and, and it's just looking after ourselves. So um, I didn't for a long time as the journalist, I was your kind of cliche <laughs> car crash of a journalist probably I was like I think I was good at my job but I probably could have been better <laughs> hey. if I wasn't if I was taking more care of myself you know so work hard play hard and now I really yeah. like self-help <laughs> yeah <laughs> we all end up down that road don't we at some point isn't it uh it's just we all end up doing self-help in the end so yeah yeah but I can't I can't believe how amazing the the, the club has done it's what got 12,000 readers already and seekers worldwide which is amazing yeah and it's probably more now to be honest I think that probably I need to update that because since Covid we've obviously we've gone online like everyone did and we did it as a kind of um we had to to support our community because originally I had meetups yeah. um, um I have volunteers who host meetups in wherever they live so at the moment we've got one in Barcelona one in Porto oh, Portugal wow. um Lancashire London you know all different places so originally that's how we were growing through um, the platform like social media and then through face-to-face um, -face events and then obviously covid I mean, meant no face-to-face -face anything <laughs> so yeah. it was something I didn't know how to do I, and like yeah. loads of people we didn't know how to do business online or to do even do connection online really like no. you know not not it, we, I suppose my worry was that we wouldn't be able to connect in the same way as we did when we met face-to-face -face. but what yeah. I found through our online membership and through our meetups and we do author events every month and stuff like that now and it's um you can you can really connect very well and you can if you're in the right group with the right kind of people and you know you're asking the right questions and you make that safe space whether it's on instagram whether it's on zoom whether it's in a room you can really you can um you know make magic connections and you can really support each other and it can still be a real really great place for like learning and inspiring and and kind of development and growth so yeah it's kind of from covid has come something quite positive for us in a way that we can now like people who come to our meetups uh, live all over the world some of yeah. them wouldn't be able to get to a face-to-face -face meetup loads of them wouldn't in fact either because they've, um, they've got a family because of the way their work hours are because of where they live quite rural or because of like social anxiety like a lot of our members yeah. you know mm -hmm. they're such cool people but the idea of walking into a room full of strangers and talking about how they're feeling which also is not my favorite thing to do <laughs> so strangely yeah. I've like created this career where <laughs> I'm asking everyone else to do it but online it somehow feels a little bit easier I think sometimes to maybe um share do you think yeah yeah there's a, a sort of a distance created in a way like a barrier so it helps in a way to yeah. do that yeah um, a lot of people yeah. like I think if it's an online club and it's something that's ongoing you can come yeah. to a meetup and you don't have to have your camera on you don't have to kind of spill your deepest darkest secrets like I kind of joke and say it's like AA but with books and <laughs> like, yeah I mean, I've been to some AA meetings and I know it's like most times people don't say anything but they get a lot from being in the room and kind of having that support so I feel like um, in our groups we read a new book every two months so oh, right. once you if you come in at the beginning of that of that book 
by by week you know by the second month you'll probably have your camera on and you'll probably be wanting to talk to the people in your group but at the very beginning you kind of like we all are you're a bit nervous aren't you you don't know what to expect yeah. so hopefully what I've done and what our <laughs> our members, our ongoing members, like our original members, the people who've been there a while, we just created this really lovely space for, like I said, for people to kind of like talk about the big things and celebrate it. And um, yeah, we're working on ourselves because we're all works in progress, aren't we? Definitely. A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. I can attest to that for sure. Um, <laughs> and um, actually, uh, you know, I, I wanted to, uh, to let you do the big reveal for your May book club so I'm quite excited uh, yeah. this is the space you're going to do it so yeah well, thank you it's an exclusive for you um <laughs> you know we know how important an exclusive is but yeah I usually reveal this on the first of the new month to kind of the world oh. our members will find out tomorrow because we have a meetup but um, anyone who's watching now gets an early taste I think Emma's online she'll she'll see what we're reading so we're going to be reading <laughs> yeah. Lost Connections by Johan Yay. Marley. Yeah, yeah, great. There she is. Exciting. So, all yeah. of our members, um, a lot of our members get uh, are on subscri- subscription, so they'll get a copy sent in the post this week. Um, so they'll be st- oh. getting that a little bit ahead of the curve. But yeah, so um, lost connections. We'll talk about it properly, I suppose, in a bit. But it's about uh, it's about connection, obviously, and it's all. But it's also about depression and anxiety and how um, like Johan Hari says the opposite of. Um, he talks a lot about addiction and that kind of like that's how uh, that's a lack of connection and how the opposite yeah. of addiction is not sobriety it's connection and so this whole book mm-hmm. is about the idea of um i mean big takeaways for me are that we're probably all depressed or anxious in some way at some point in, our, in some, some point in our life and it's like it's this it's an epidemic isn't it it's a pandemic these mm-hmm. kind of mental health problems challenges that we have but the book talks about the kind of the surprising reasons behind that and it's not just necessarily about how your brain works it might be about Mm. being in a job you hate it might be about how you talk to yourself it might be about yeah not having purpose it might be about never getting outside and moving your body there's all he talks about all these different reasons for not feeling great and it makes so much sense as you're reading through it you're just literally like for me when I read a book like this it's like light bulb moment like a cartoon Mm. kind of like going off yeah but so he talks about the different um the different uh problem uh, the reasons for the problems and then he also talks about some solutions which I think is brilliant and that's what I, I'm always trying to do it's kind of like yeah. okay <laughs> it's okay not to be okay of course it is but not forever we don't want to be like yeah. that forever mm. and well, from what I've learned from the book club and from everything I read and also my own experiences there's so much we can do to feel better so it's like 100%. teaching yourself that well that reading is one thing isn't it and then actually doing it is obviously another thing so but it's like teaching yourself that learning about that but then and then being able to apply it to your life I think is just that's the magic of a self-help book and then um, this one is um yeah very very r- right for now I feel like especially after two years of strange yeah. connections you know and disconnection for loads of people I think already we were pretty disconnected so now yeah. it's a uh, how we now we're in this new normal whatever that is and whatever that look like looks like for you it's like mm. here are some things that you can do to um feel better connected I think yeah. the idea that connection is is just a key part of good mental health. I think, you know, we don't really realise that necessarily. So making, being intentional about that and not just expecting to have great connections and great relationships and great friendships because that's what should happen. Like sometimes you've got to make an effort or do something a bit different yeah. or be conscious about, you know, who you're spending your time with, what you're talking about, all that kind of stuff. So this book kind of represents a lot of what Shelf Help's about really. I yeah no. a great book for our connected self-help community oh good yeah <laughs> yeah I mean it I sounds like I'm like... oh, sorry I was just about to say yeah it sounds like Emma's very excited to hear about uh lost connections <laughs> yeah yeah she should be doing her homework and reading the last few pages of our uh of our other book <laughs> <laughs> which finishes this week so um yeah so that's um so that, and also the mental health awareness week is in may i'm sure you know that mm-hmm. and the theme this year is loneliness and obviously each year oh. they, they have a different theme and i feel like loneliness yeah. is such a not a taboo subject but it feels like almost it's it's it is more possible to say i feel anxious or i feel depressed it's like that's becoming yeah. part of our language isn't it now more of our kind of regular Actually. language i think but to say you feel lonely there's some i feel like there's some big stigma with that still even though loads of us feel lonely and again, at different times, in different ways, for different reasons. So um, that being the kind of May theme, I think is a really good way to kind of talk more about books like this and talk about the idea of loneliness and connection and why it's so important and how we can all get better at it. 
because like with all self-help stuff it's just a practice loads of it is like the, if you don't like the way you speak to yourself you can change that you know if you don't like how you feel in the morning you can change that it's just it's just learning about the things you can do and then and then putting them into practice and then that consistency of showing up and doing it and if it's about when it comes to connections it's just making sure that you do keep speaking to the right people and do yeah. you know give there's um sarah knight is a great author she writes lots of really sweary self-help books um and so i won't say oh, what yeah. titles are now yeah. just in case you I, know. <laughs> yeah she i always, know them yeah she always says about um your time your energy and your money they're all limited so they're finite mm -hmm. so what are you spending them on because if you spend them all on one thing they run out by the time you get to the thing you really want to spend them on and that's really resonated with me and i always talk about that that idea because when it comes to connection yeah i i mean i used to think being connection was being connected was just to know as many people as possible and to do as many things as possible and now I realize that that's not a necessarily nourishing connection or you know positive mm. or good for me connection so very much mm -hmm. so now I spend I try try it doesn't always work but I'm trying to be you know more boundaried about spending my mm. time energy money on the right people and on the right connections and I just think that's important to realize that it is something we can change if we don't if we're not happy with what it looks like at the moment yeah, hundred percent. And you know, the book is so interesting because it's got so many really interesting anecdotes from it. Um, you know, mm -hmm. he he did a lot of um sort of in it, research around sort of various historical and um, scientific kind of facts, which I thought was quite interesting. And he talks about what was it, the Haygarth's wand, uh, which is um, essentially a placebo, uh, which was sold mm -hmm. to lots of patients, I think, in seventeen ninety nine as a cure. And, you know, people would use this as like a wand to cure any ailments, which I thought was amazing. Um, and people believed it for ages. So I was just wondering, well, how powerful do you think placebos are? A lot more powerful than we realise, totally. Having read things like this, um, I reference and I read and I speak to Dr. David, Ham David Hamilton a lot. And he, oh. was, um, he was a chemist and a scientist and he used to work for a cancer drug company. Um, and he started... And they use placebos, uh, placebo tests and all, you know, their trials for every every drug that comes out. And from and then when he started looking at results, he was just kind of like, why aren't we looking more into this then? If this mm -hmm. if these work, why are we why are we creating a drug that would doesn't even work as <laughs> yeah. well in most of the time? So um, what I think is great about this book and also about uh, David Hamilton's work is it kind of combines those scientific studies with case studies of yeah. real people as well. So it makes it kind of relevant and interesting and applicable to us. But yeah, the placebo effect and the, like the mind body connection, is just huge. So I'm really getting more into that. So um, the documentary Heal, I love, which is on Netflix. Mm. And we, we, we covered the book version of that as well as a, oh. as a community. We've done, we talk a lot about self-care. So the Susie Redding's work. And the, that is a lot about kind of, you know, be good to your body, be good to yourself. And that's going to make a big, big, big impact on your mental health. So definitely the placebo effect, I, you know, a thousand percent believe it's more percent, more, more powerful than we realize. And yeah, the mind body connection is something that um, I think we need to talk about more probably. Definitely. And, and I think that's kind of how he suggests these sort of nine common causes for depression, it being slightly different to sort of the, the usual kind of biological aspect of it, which was, I think, if, you, if I'm not mistaken, like meaningful work, loneliness, as you mentioned, yeah. values, trauma, a disconnect from your own status and respect. And I think also like being disconnected from nature and mm -hmm. sort of a lack of hopeful and secure future. So like for you, what do you feel is the most significant aspect that could cause you to feel kind of depressed? Do you feel me personally or? Yeah, yeah well, for you personally. Mm. Yeah, I wrote, I wrote a few things down for this. I've written a few notes mm. and I've written lots of things actually, but again, in, <laughs> at different times of my life and, and at different intensities, I suppose, because I've never actually said to myself, I'm depressed. But when you, I think mm. with loads of people will resonate with the idea that in hindsight, you could be like, yeah probably wasn't feeling my most positive self so um probably I was feeling depressed so um lack of purpose and direction was huge mm -hmm. for me when I um when I left my career in journalism because I kind of just yeah. left because I was like this isn't working for me right now like you know mentally physically um but again I didn't really think about mental health I just thought mm -hmm. this making, I'm making myself ill and that was manifesting physically but obviously probably mentally as well so I think 
purpose and direction then and not having a routine didn't really understand much about the importance of routine I thought that was the most boring thing how dull you know now it's like now we love yeah. our routine and, it's, and I also realized how important it is like the science behind it you know going to sleep at the same time waking up at the same mm. time um and also the, the the kind of the causes lots of causes of depression can just be really basic things like are oh, you getting enough sleep if you don't get enough yeah. sleep everything else is harder so like whatever's going on in your life give yourself as much kind of ammunition and as much grounding to do to deal with it as well as possible which is the basics so it is sleep it is kind of drinking enough water eating the right foods getting outside mm -hmm. like you talked about before and all the stuff that it just kind of sounds so simple it's not always simple mm -hmm. is it it's kind of no um we know and loads of us know all this stuff so I think for me it's like when I slip now when I slip out of routine so like Easter and the last week for me have been kind of very not in my normal routine so I mm -hmm. haven't been doing my haven't been writing in my journal haven't been do it well the only thing the only thing that I've actually kept up is my hot lemon and water every morning but everything else <laughs> very is good gone. it's gone like nowhere. <laughs> so I feel like on my habit tracker when I go back to fill it in at least that will be there but um but it's okay because now I think now I know that I know what I need to do to kind of get back on it so tomorrow might be a bit more painful <laughs> than your average Monday but it's like I know I'm just going to get up early I'm going to do some yoga I'm going to get outside I'm um, not going to worry too much that I had two weeks of not eating perfectly or, you know, drinking mm -hmm. too much or whatever. So I think the more you practice this stuff, then the, then the less you're likely to kind of fall into a depression when you get it wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it's, it's understanding that things go, life goes up and down and yeah. um, there's different ways to deal with that at different times. So, yeah, self-care getting outside some kind of routine and plan I think for me are the important things and when mm -hmm. when I let those slide because I feel great then it's mm -hmm. like oh now suddenly I don't feel so great anymore so I've got to remind myself to keep doing them definitely it's so easy to slip out of those habits especially when something is like uh, an event occurs yeah. like Christmas and Easter and stuff it's just so easy to sort of slip out of it and yeah and you were mentioning you know just going out and things like that and I was just wondering like how can like nature sort of help us do you think in terms of like getting through things generally yeah I think there's a lot of research on how nature physic will change you physiologically like it helps you regulate your nervous system and regulating our nervous system is what we need to do to keep calm and to kind of have, you know, to kind of have that kind of like general ba basic level of contentment and happiness. And so, um, yeah, whether you call it forest bathing or whether you call it just mm. going for a walk in the woods, it's like it's like yeah. <laughs> the trees, the trees give off stuff. I'm not sure about the exact science, but I'm sure we can find it out. But the trees are giving off things that are going to make you make your body react in in a good way there's there's studies I think he talks about this one in the book that hospital mm. patients just looking out just looking out at nature versus looking at a, a grim hospital wall heal quicker you know so mm. it's like nature it's like we kind of we know we, we know I think we all know we feel better when we go for a walk get off our screens you know change the scene all mm. that kind of stuff but it's like actually I think sometimes when you understand the science behind it it makes it even more makes you kind of want to do it even more doesn't it because it's yeah. like right this is good for me so like even yeah if I don't go to the gym even if I don't kind of make it to that class if I do go for a walk that's I'm still choosing to do something really good for my my physical health and like the movement you know the exercise that kind of stuff but also your mental health as well because it does it, it sorts out your nervous system but it also changes your perspective doesn't it just kind of you know look at something beautiful and pretty and yeah. not your inbox <laughs> for 10 minutes will we'll definitely just change how you feel so it's like and like again these are small things that we all know we should do <laughs> and yeah. they actually work so let's just try and do them a bit more right oh god I know tell me about it and, and that is that sort of sort of brings me through like to the um the idea of like this social prescription um which is you know, do you think actually a social prescription could be as beneficial as like anything else well, I just I think it's all about having a toolkit of, of a toolkit of lots of different things that you can draw on at different times um, to feel better as needed. So um, that could look like lots of different things. Like so, self help. We're a book club, really. We have mm. it's about self help, self development, which I'm realizing is kind of your mental health, really. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not a men, a, I'm trained in mental health. You know, I'm not a therapist and not a practitioner, but our 
a lot of our members are doctors, teachers, coaches, kind of a lot of caregivers. And then we now we get socially prescribed by doctors and counsellors mm. and therapists who are saying to their patients, maybe medication is one way, but then here's here's something else. And it's not it's not necessarily an either or, but it's a, it's a compliment or it's just another thing to look at. And the idea of um, social prescribing is you'll be advised to try something which has a community element, which has a network element. And the, the value of that is is just mega. So that is, mm -hmm. it's just good for us in so many different ways. And if we don't have that, then I don't think, you know, the, all the medication in the world, if you have no, no good connections, that's not, you're not going to feel happy. So I think, mm -hmm. um, I think I just believe mm -hmm. that, yeah, to have as many things as possible that you use as and when needed really. But I think the idea of social prescribing for like from, um, like a social issues point of view is brilliant it's like it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's 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 often it's free you know it's easy yeah. it's um people are it's it's much easier to be able to tell someone to go to a book club or go to a running club or kind of start an art class or something like that it's so mm -hmm. this is all really positive stuff and I think back to the book it's like this is what he's talking about so obviously he he's someone who was prescribed medication for a long time and so he's writing this from a point of view he didn't really want to find out it might not be the answer to everything because no. oh, oh, oh shit what does that mean now I have to find some other <laughs> some other answer yeah <laughs> but it's uh, but it's really valuable because he's then like looking at all these other different things and I suppose because the case studies are so great in here as well like from the outside looking in he tells the story of someone whose you know job is just so awful and so boring mm -hmm. and you don't know that person but you just feel so bad for them and you just think of course you don't love your life you know yeah. of course mm -hmm. and we've all been in a good job a crap job that we hate and hopefully most of us have been able to move out of that and if not then it's about finding ways to kind of feel better in it or move out of it so I think yeah the idea of being able to prescribe something that's not medication and that is that, that it works to our kind of inherent social nature because that's, we are mm -hmm. social animals yeah, I think it's super value, valuable and I hope that books like this and kind of work like that will help it become just more kind of more popular, I suppose, or more common. Mm. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, I, I totally agree. So, you know, and, you know, he, he gives sort of lots of examples. You you mentioned a few examples of how to connect and things like that. And I was thinking things like choirs and they, they've become very popular over the pandemic as well. You know, just this sort of collective uh, nature of it, um, so to speak. So for you, what's the best way that you like reconnect? Hmm. So I think... Like I said to you earlier, it's for me, I'm, I'm an extrovert. I think I'm a shy extrovert, which is sometimes a, like a strange position to be in, but it's people, it's like being with people. Um, and I actually do connect really well with people online. Um, and I, but I love being with people in a room. Like I love parties, mm -hmm. I love a big group dinner. Um, I love, like, and like I said, with the right people. So connecting with like really good friends is kind of my favorite thing to do, I think. Um, since I live now in the country, which was like a lockdown mm. kind of accidental move. So I kind of moved yeah. from busy city to uh, to the country. And for ages, I kind of I felt I kind of, I was feeling lonely and a bit kind of like mm. displaced. And, you know, it was like, it was all the right thing to do. And it was my decision. So I suppose there's the kind of idea of choice, isn't there in loneliness and stuff. Mm. But I found a gym. And then I found mm. a, spin, a spin class, which and I love spinning and I, and I love the music and I love the, like the being surrounded by people. And so I think connecting, finding something that you really just enjoy. It doesn't mean they're going to be my best friends, but it's just like getting in a room with a load of people listening to great music mm. and kind of doing some exercise is what I, makes me feel really good. So I just try to make mm. sure that I try and try and do that. But I didn't really realize that was missing until I kind of actually mm. kind of got intentional about what do I miss and what about the city you know what is it what what would I love to be able to do with my friends tomorrow and is it like go for a really nice dinner yeah go for a spin class so it's like well I better find them then <laughs> so yeah that's been my search for a while but like I said it's about getting intentional you know it's like mm. no one's going to just kind of walk up to my door and say do you want to be friends so sometimes yeah. it's like having to put yourself in those positions that it feels a bit kind of like ee, and a bit awkward <laughs> yeah. or whatever especially as an adult yeah, yeah it's really hard it's like yeah. dating isn't it it's like it's a yeah. similar thing but like for friends <laughs> but it's like if you don't do that then you'll never get to the next stage which is like really nice and what you what we're all looking for and you know if you do do that and it goes wrong it's like what's the worst can happen like we talk a lot of it in the yeah. community about not rejection therapy or so we do talk about that but it's like the idea of 
rejection just means you've tried and it's just like feedback mm. we kind of like we love a reframe so it's just like you know if it didn't work out it's not for you and that's mm. now you know so let's try something else rather than it didn't work out everyone hates me I'm never gonna you know go out again <laughs> <laughs> which is like sometimes that's where the brain goes isn't it <laughs> yeah totally yeah. oh god and it, yeah as it, it is really hard as an adult you know to sort of do these kind of you know can reconnect and we, we're always in sort of places where we just don't have that level of connection anymore we don't do sort of bars and nightclubs like we used to and all of that has changed considerably and so I'm just wondering what would your advice be in terms of like changing that because I feel like there's no more social spaces unless it's engineered like as you said mm. like dating apps and things like that yeah it is harder so I think it is about kind of like it's finding that tribe of people isn't it um which is mm. we talk about a lot again it's like it's finding people who are like you and then making the time and making the effort to either go to the online stuff or go to the event um mm. starting your own if you know if you don't if it if it's like this is what I did with shelf help I've never been to a book club in my life but <laughs> I was reading these books and I was like I need to share this information and I need to talk yeah. to other people about it and that was the thing and I don't think I ever I, I never I didn't ever realize that how important the community side of it would be until like the last few years has shown us and now that's like that's the bit that people keep mm -hmm. coming back for Sometimes they yeah. read the books, <laughs> not always. <laughs> but it's actually, so this is a book club that people come to for the connection. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think ex exercise is always great and it doesn't necessarily yeah. need to be something mm -hmm. like super hardcore, but yoga, like yoga studios have a nice vibe for a reason. And it's because everyone there is like on the same wavelength and they're kind of, mm -hmm. you know, they're friendly to everyone. So it's like, even if you don't love yoga yet, just you could start doing something like that and kind of going somewhere mm -hmm. where there's already a community of people who are pretty kind you know and kind of yeah and it's practice mm. as well isn't it I think it's it kind is. of we've loads of us have forgotten how to socialize <laughs> for a start <laughs> so, so hard I'm like yeah. people don't even know what to wear anymore because you know we're all like pajamas below the screen so it's like you know even social cues are really odd now like when you see someone's face and you realize that there's so much people are giving off when they're talking and there's so much that we're actually processing and yeah. that is missed through, say, Zoom meetings and things like that. So it, it's so interesting to sort of reconnect in, in that way yeah. as well, like outside yeah. of this, that space. And yeah, and, uh, yeah cause, and I'm getting all this advice from you because basically I am a social introvert. So oh, yeah. the opposite. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I like my own space, but I like talking to people. So, yeah, uh, yeah it's sort of like, hmm. Hard to hard to find the the happy balance, I would say, in that sort of the situation. It but, is, uh... it's, it's tricky, but I think now it's like for ages. I mean, anyone that was like socially introverted, COVID was just the excuse to never do anything, wasn't it? So it was yeah. like, oh, sorry, sorry, I can't come. <laughs> covid and that was like okay and now it's like well that's not really and also i think people not are really realizing it's not it's not necessarily good for you either to never be connected no. with anyone but it is mm. a good it's a good opportunity now to kind of to get intentional about what you want your friendships to look like i wanted to recommend mm. another book if possible um, please while yeah. we're here it's called belong Oh, I, I, I've read that. You know Love that book. I, I yeah. follow her on um, her her crazy rave things. Yeah. Down. Yeah. Day, Daybreaker. I I I, Daybreaker, I go sorry. to all the. I always go to the um, online uh, events and they're fad flipping tastic, aren't there they? There you go. So you're getting. Yeah. That's that's like awesome connection through music through a community of people and it is online. But they do do yeah. real life ones. I've been to one in London, so. Oh, how, oh, did they, oh, I didn't realise yeah. they were doing ones. Ah, oh, cool. Yeah, that so is maybe so cool. that could be like a goal for you. Because yeah. <laughs> if you're already like oh, in the online community, maybe you can connect with someone who might go, you know, you can meet somebody there or something. But I love this book and I've been recommending it quite a lot at the moment because I think connection is such a, a hot topic. Mm. But there's one exercise that she does and it's about um, when you kind of, you're writing a list of like, what do you want in a friend? And so it's almost like, you know, like when you write doing your like kind of vision board of like what you want in your perfect partner or whatever, it's like, what do you want mm. in, a, in a friend? And then it's like, what don't you want in a friend in column two? Mm. And then the third column is like, what, yeah. do you, what do you need to embody to attract number the people in number one? So if you want for a bigger friend, someone who's kind and always on time and considerate, but you're always late, then maybe you need to kind of like think about, oh, what am I bringing to the table? 
So I really mm. like that exercise because it's, again, it's not like, like me, I can't just sit here and expect someone to knock on my door at the end of a yeah. gravel drive, you know? It's like, I need to start going out. And I tried a few things. Like I went to like a five rhythms dance class, which is one of those, Ooh, nice. I'm like spiritual. And it was like, I literally was dying inside for like an hour and a half. But I stayed <laughs> and I did it. And I thought, I won't do it again because that like, like break is more my thing. But it yeah. was like, okay like whereas before I think I would have tried to get I would have gone to something like that and I would have pushed myself to do it mm. and then thought what a disaster I'm never doing anything like that again mm. whereas now I'm like right. I tried it it's not, it's not for me <laughs> that's fine yeah no <laughs> definitely I won't waste two hours of my life doing it again but I'll try oh, it you know <laughs> and it's a good story so <laughs> well done well done you stuck it yeah. out well done <laughs> god so i've got to ask you what would you give it out of five stars what would your rating be i've got to give this five out of five because i've chosen Ooh. it for book club uh, <laughs> so yeah brave with you because i feel like um, like i said a, a shelf help a self-help book sorry and a shelf help book it's like it's a, it, the best self-help books for me are a combination of science and real people and mm. something that gives you solutions so give us the information tell us the problem tell us some of the solutions and kind of give us some ac- ac- actions that we can do so there's not necessarily exercises in this book like mm. a lot, we like a lot of exercises and stuff yeah. this is more <laughs> yeah. kind of like about a kind of bigger social picture but I think mm. um there's so many takeaways and there's so many people will will be able to relate to lots of different parts of it so I think um yeah it's definitely there's definitely a lot of light bulb moments and and I always think if you only just take away one kind of like life-changing thing from a book then it's been worth worth to read right and I think this there'll be there'll be several life-changing moments for a few people oh amazing that well I love a rave review I love a rave review that's awesome yeah because that's that's it it just it hopefully the community will be like yeah this is a book that is worth going ahead and reading so thank you so much for that recommendation and uh and yeah, and enjoy next month's book club because obviously lots of people are going to be reading this and uh, feeding back. So yes, and Emma, Emma is excited too. So that's awesome. Emma's excited. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> way to you, Emma. Um, and will you, join, will you join us for the read along? Do you think? I do. You know what? I will. I will. It yeah, sounds okay. amazing. So thank you so much, Tony. I really appreciate you joining me on a Sunday evening in this You're beautiful welcome. weather. So thank you so much. And David is excited. So we're, we're ready to go. <laughs> we're ready, guys. We're ready. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you for having me and letting me talk about self-help. My favorite oh, thing please. to do any day. <laughs> please come back whenever you like, if you have another recommendation. All right. I will. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye.